Hello and welcome to Slack Chat Season 2, Episode 17. I'm Stuart Winter, the developer and platform architect for the ARM port of Slackware. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about the operating system initial RAM disk manager, which is a tool to help manage local customizations of the operating system's initial RAM disk. I'll just explain briefly what the initial RAM disk is, but if you're looking for more information about how this all plugs together, then look at episode 12 of season two entitled Slackware ARM ARC64 Kernel Module Loader. And in that episode, we go into significant depth about how the system's designed and how the community can help um, support other ARM platforms. But in this episode, I'm just going to give you a very brief introduction to what the initial RAM disk is before we get into having a look at the tool and how you can use it. Okay, so essentially the initial RAM disk is a very small environment and its sole purpose, at least for the way that we use it in the operating system world, its sole purpose is to provide a springboard for the, for the operating system proper to boot. What that means in essence is that the initial RAM disk has a collection of kernel modules for the running kernel and it has some scripts available that load a collection of drivers, a collection of software Linux kernel modules that light up the hardware on the physical hardware platform and that allows the operating system to boot. So what's going on there is, is that it's going to load kernel modules for things like network interface cards, storage like NVMe, SCSI drivers, USB drivers for USB caddies, various other core components of, of the stack that are required. And once those are loaded, hopefully the storage will be available at that point so that the so that we can switch into the operating system proper that you've actually installed. And at that point, the execution flow will shift into that and it will boot the operating system proper and the initial RAM disk will be discarded from memory. This tool that we're going to talk about today, the OS initRD manager, the operating system initial RAM disk manager, is not available in Slackware x86. It's purely for Slackware ARM and Slackware ARCH64. When you look at episode 12, you'll, as I said, you'll get the understanding of, of how this thing's constructed. The reason that we're doing it differently in the ARM world uh, is covered in episode 12, but essentially, because it's we're dealing with system on chips here, we already know in advance what the map of that system is. We know what hardware is physically baked into the chip. So that allows us to be prescriptive up front and, and say that, you know, with this type of hardware for an Orange Pi, for a Raspberry Pi, for a Rock Pro 64, for example, we know that we need a certain collection of modules just to light that board up and, and get it booted. So what that allows us to do is to bring forwards everything that you would see in the x86 world where you install Slackware and it creates you an initial RAM disk for the machine you're running it on at that time. We bring all of that forwards and if you like front load it because we already know in advance what the system is going to be like. One of the good things about that is that it means that we can have a consistent set of kernel drivers in all environments. So that's the installer and the OS init RD and what I'm calling live cards. Uh, at the moment I haven't developed any live cards but those would essentially be live operating systems in a similar vein to say what Alien Bob does or Eric Hamilliers does for the uh, Slackware bootable ISO images, but we do that on ARM and I call them live cards because they uh, would go onto an SD card. <laughs> so I haven't built those yet. But those are somewhere in the, in the distant future, I think, that I can get around to. It means that we have a consistent set of kernel drivers in all of those environments. The drop-in hardware model loader system that I've built, it allows the community to help onboard Slackware ARM and ARCH64 onto these other devices. I'm going to begin by showing you how to use the tool from the Slackware installer because that's the first place that you may need to use this if we're missing any driver support for hardware that you have. So let's have a look now how to do that and then once I've done that I'll show you how to manage it within the operating system once it's booted. Okay, so we're going to begin in the Slackware installer. So I'm just going to finish off the installation process. Okay, and you'll see the dialog box here, setup complete, you may now reboot. So we'll just press OK. And then we'll go to exit the installer at the bottom of the menu. 
you'll always be prompted whether you want to reboot the system. Typically, you'll always want to reboot after you finish moving through the Slackware installer. But in this case, I'm not going to reboot the system. I'm going to drop myself into a shell. The Slackware installer mounts the root file system of the operating system into slash MNT. So what I'm going to do now is run through a simple example of adding a Linux kernel module to the operating system initial RAM disk. So now I'm going to cheroot into slash MNT. Okay, so I'm now inside the root file system where the operating system resides. I've got a simple installation here. So I have everything on a single partition, SD, dev SDA2. That's the only partition I have on the system. So mine's really straightforward. So we're gonna go into the boot directory. So this is the boot directory that houses the, the kernel and the initial RAM disk and some other stuff. I'm just gonna point out this file here because you need to make sure that you leave this file in place. It just contains some information about the initial RAM disk to help the OS initRD manager tool to unpack the image and handle it. So just leave this file in place. You don't need to touch this one. Now, so we cd into slash boot slash local. You'll notice that here there is a readme file. That details a little bit about how the initial RAM disk system works. And it talks about the configuration files that you can control with the tool. And it talks about these files as well that I've just highlighted there. What we're gonna do is have a look at the man page first. Okay, so there's a bit of information in there. And you can see here listed the three configuration files that are to do with loading modules. The first two listed here are for more advanced users. You can find out about these and read about them inside of the documentation. And one of the recent episodes in this series talks about how the initial RAM disk system works in Slackware ARM and ARCH64. So you can learn a bit more about that here. But just for this video and for this example, we're just gonna have a look at this file here because this is the most common file that you would need to change there are some other configuration files that reside within the initial RAM disk as well. And these are listed out here inside the man page. So these, as I'm scrolling through here, these are all of the configuration files which also control the way that the initial RAM disk works when it boots up. So these are the, these are the configuration files as well. What we're gonna do now is follow one of the examples from the documentation directly. So what we're gonna do just for this example is to follow the example in the man page. So let's do that and you can get an idea of how the, how the tool works. So let's have a look here. We've got a few sample files included and we want to modify the post one. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so what we'll do, let's move that one to the name we need. Okay, so let's put in some real kernel modules here. And what I'm gonna do is just add in an echo statement so that you can see inside of the boot sequence where this file has been loaded. And we'll put a, a quite a generous sleep in there as well, just so we can see that on the screen. Okay, so we've saved that file there. One final thing here is that, as you can see, these are bash shell scripts. So it gives you that control and flexibility. So let's write that file there and then call the tool. There we go. So it's unpacking the existing initial RAM disk. So you can see that it found the customization there. And now it's repacking it. Okay. So you can see that it's successfully added those customizations to the operating system initial RAM disk. What we can do now is we can exit from the cheroot and there we go, and we can reboot. Okay, so the installer is now going to reboot. So we'll see the installer exiting and now U-boot is booting. Oh look, here we go. 
here is the example line loading module there we go as you can see so you saw in the boot sequence there that the that the customization has been executed as part of the boot process so that module that we added in will be loaded so this is an orange pi plus 2e uh, it's the first time i've logged into it since reinstallation and by default this platform doesn't have a real-time clock you can connect an rtc to the gpio pins but i haven't done that on here i just set the time via ntp so the first thing i want to show you here is how the tool persists these local customizations that we've just made across the kernel upgrade process so i know that there is already a new kernel available so let's upgrade to it and see what happens the kernel modules package is ready to be upgraded and it's just running through the upgrade process now so we're going to upgrade from linux 5.13.9 to linux 5.13.11 okay so it's completed upgrading the kernel modules package and now it's installing the kernel base package it contains the kernel image and the initial ram disk so it's just doing some tidying up first and now it's verifying the new kernel package okay and as you can see the os init rd tool is running in the post installation phase of the package upgrade process so you can see that it's found this load kernel modules .post, which is the file we edited when we were still inside the installer so as you can see it's now unpacking the initial ram disk it's populating the initial ram disk with those customizations that we made and now it's repacking the init rd and there we go the process is complete you can see here that it says it's successfully added the local customizations and the kernel upgrade process is complete okay so as i said earlier there are two categories of files here those for the kernel loader process which is what we've just looked at and configurations files for the running of the initial ram disk itself so let's have a quick look at the man page again There's a section here where it says files, operating system and, and miscellaneous configuration. The files that are listed down here will, if they're present within the slash boot slash local directory, will be reincorporated into the OS in its RD once you run the tool. So let me give you an example of this. But before I do, there is an important note here. You can configure any of these files and we will honor the configuration, but the kernel command line options take precedence. So if you look at, say, the X Linux configuration in Slackware ARCH64, or you look at the U-boot configuration for Slackware ARM, you'll see inside of those installation documents and config files that we are setting certain parameters using the kernel command line interface. So for example, actually I'll show you. So like, So like here, for example, you can see that we're setting the root file system location to be slash dev slash SDA2 using the root equals parameter there. In this case, this is achieved through the U-boot configuration. So what I'm simply pointing out is, is that if you configure any of the files that are listed in the man page, you need to make sure that you're not overriding them using the kernel command line interface because those will always take precedence. Okay, back to the man page. Typically, the only things that you'd really want to use here would be the information for LUX, for example. I'm not gonna show you that in this video here, but the configuration of these files is the same as it would be on Slackware x86 and the format is here so you can read about this and, and figure out how to do it quite easily i'm just going to give you a really short example of editing one of these files so let's say that we wanted to configure the key map inside of the initial ram disk environment okay we now have files here and we have a new one called key map 
let's run the tool again. As you can see, it's found the additional local customization here, slash boot, slash local, slash key map, and the other one that we edited earlier. And it's now repacking the initial RAM disk. Okay, and that's complete. So finally, let's have a look at how to remove those local customizations. The easiest thing to do is to create a directory to hold those customizations in case you would like to add them back at a later date. So I've moved the two files that we changed into a directory called archive. And then let's run the tool again. But this time, as you can see, there aren't any local customizations, so the tool is refusing to do anything further, as by design. By default, if there are no local customizations, the tool will silently exit. So if you don't have any local customizations and you run through the kernel upgrade process, you'll see nothing from the OS init RD manager tool whatsoever. So what we need to do in this situation is supply it with the dash F option. And that will force a rebuild. So you can see that it's searching for local customizations. It didn't find any. It's unpacking and now it's repacking. And as you can see, it successfully rebuilt the OS initial RAM disk. So the local customizations have now been removed. And we can check again. Yep, there are none. Okay, and that's how you use the tool. It's really straightforward. And so this is one of the critical tools in Slackware ARM and Slackware AR64 for managing the initial RAM disk. If you find any modules that you think are really useful that should be included in the base set, please let moses at slackware.com know about it. That's me. And I'll probably add those into the base list. Ordinarily, I don't think most of you will need to be touching this, but just to let you know that this tool is available and it's pretty easy to use. And it allows you to persist those local changes throughout the life cycle of the kernel package. Okay, well, that's the end of this episode. So I hope you found that useful. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.